Alright, I'm not one to hold a grudge, but... Adrian Bolt isn't getting away with an article he wrote a month ago. No siri Goff. Eh? What about that, eh? No siri Goff instead of no siri Bob? Come on, let's bastardise that saying. Especially when the more you look into bolts. Oh, uh, that's good enough. I don't need to do much research on this one. Catch in the bag. I think I'll just unwind with my favourite hobby of watching UFC fights and listening to... Oh! oh nasty right hand! The title of the article was It's time to face the truth about Gough Whitlam. So I'm taking his advice, let's do that because You'll discover what everyone knows anyway That Gough Whitlam was actually the best Prime Minister we ever had EXPOSED Which coincidentally exposes yet another truth we all knew and that is Who'd have guessed but Andrew Bolt doesn't have any journalistic integrity This has truly turned my perception of life on its head, Bruce. Here's the claim Professional kettle impersonator Andrew Bolt dismisses quite a varying list of Whitlam's achievements, stating What counts more than grand gestures? Andrew Bolt counts a grand gesture as Recognising Communist China? Yeah, it's symbolic mostly, just like red traffic lights. You don't need to stop at them either, because they're symbols. Andrew Bolt's article! Yeah! In fact, not only did Whitlam recognise Communist China, Communist China recognised him. Look at this footage of Whitlam chilling with Chairman Mao. How jealous are you of Goff? Even history's most brutal dictator looks at this guy and thinks, God damn it, Goff Whitlam got swagger. Perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps Andrew Bolt's three words generously given to acknowledge the most economically significant event in Australian post-war history that exudes about the same level of gratitude that a husband has for his wife in a relationship where the love died years ago. How dinner, honey. <laughs> Guy opened up a diplomatic relationship with Australia's biggest trading partner, responsible for trillions of dollars in economic activity that have given us one of the easiest rides for 40 years straight, and Bolt wants his sizzler potato skin hogging audience to believe that this act, which saved us from the global financial crisis, is nothing more than a gesture. I said grand gesture, okay? Grant means big. Lessons in vocab with Andrew Bolt. Yeah, my attitude to sentence structure is the same as a dojo master's. Sim pretty. Then he goes on with no evidence at all to suggest that Goff Whitlam was mashing the dreams of the people he was elected to serve. Ooh, he's got me there. I thought I was elected to be the Australian Gallagher. I mistook the Australian electorate for a watermelon. By having the common sense to start up a relationship with China, Australians on average are $14,000 better off a year as a result of the $120 billion in trade that relationship generates annually. So all those Andrew Bolt sheep who wrote down arguments word for word that they read off Bolt's blog on a Gough Whitlam tribute articles because they're that incapable of original thought, which is very sad for democracy when you think about it. We're essentially allowing tape recorders to vote. Make sure you take these votes just as seriously as you do the others, guys. This has been a recording voting message from Andrew Bolt, over and out. How about those tape recorders take their 14 grand, which they believe made him THE WORST PRIME MINISTER EVER! Chuck it in a swear jar and we'll use the collected revenue to sculpt a giant replica of Gough Whitlam's arse and put it on the opera house. Then, every last one of those 90 sunglasses wearing meatheads with their arms folded in the display pictures has to kiss it if they want to keep the other $14,000 paychecks they owe Gough Whitlam with each year that passes. Oh, these sunnies don't shave me eyes at all as the sun actually shines out of Gough Whitlam's ass. Oh yeah, well he wasn't the first. Numerous Western nations in Europe had full diplomatic relations with mainland China. That pathetic pub trivia point doesn't tarnish Gough Whitlam's name at all. Surely that says a lot more about the quote-unquote adult party you're a died in the wall supporter of, which was obviously led by Tommy Pickles at one point, who, as we all know, always put the economy first, and as such sensible economic managers that they refused to even talk to China for 23 years just because they don't believe exactly the same things we do. So we're not speaking to them! The party of grown-ups. Dismiss him! No, I don't want to wait until he calls an election! I want to be in power now! Combined with the dialogues and train relations he strengthened and began with Indonesia, Korea, Japan and India, Gough Whitlam is responsible for $333 billion of trade a year that means he's never even contemplated because he was one of those ten-chinned xenophobic yobbos who looks like an obese Bart wheezing. I wash myself with a rag on a stick. It wasn't even a mutually agreed, well, he just happened to be in power at the time scenario. Whitlam was in opposition. 
And the Liberals tried to condemn him as a communist, only to have their views completely shut down by the biggest communist of them all, Nixon, opening up relations with them a few days later. Ow! Egg on yo! The right can attempt to fling pathetic cheap deflections at Gough Whitlam's economic and international relations policy all they like, but I can think of at least one major player that's not at all convinced by their baboon level musings. China. Good man, I speak Chinglish. Even I think Andrew Bow article is too simple. Hailing him on his death, unlike Witchface, is the father of Australia-China relations. They used to make a special effort to pay tribute to Gough Whitlam decades after he was Prime Minister, with envoys coming in to pay their respects, a custom which piqued Mr Whitlam's curiosity in the 1980s. So he finally asked what I got the highest regard an Asian diplomat can give a man, which is to respond with a Confucianesque proverb, and that was... When you draw water from a well, you must not forget who dug the well? Bounce. Please press the subscribe button now. Come on.